Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Ace Attorney Dual Destinies, where we're back to headphones. Uh, only thing I did notice about the earbuds is their the latency was a little bit lower, so that was uh, that was nice. It's gonna be a uh, gonna be an adjustment, but uh, a little bit more comfortable. I think we were headed to the detention center. In case you're in case you were concerned about my comfort. Athena, thank you so much for coming. A little loud though. She called me she called me Thena like she used to. Maybe she's finally letting her guard down. Alright. Let's talk the script. Judy, the crime's unfolding exactly like your script. Any idea what's going on here? We wanted to make it fair, so the script was kept secret until the day of the mock trial. And then only people who knew the details were Professor Courtney. Hmm. Nothing we haven't heard already so far. However... Yes? What is it, Junie? Uh, well, there was this one article in the school paper. There we go. You mean this one? It's more like a tabloid piece in a newspaper article, if you ask me. I've... I've been worried that the trial would wreck this friendship between Rob and Hugh and me. She wants to stay friends, but both of the guys are hoping to take it to the next level. Oh, the passion of high school drama. I wish I could have experienced it. Really? I know I shouldn't have, but... I revised the script to favor the prosecution. Oh. Uh, okay. But Professor Court noticed it immediately and changed it back. Uh, so if Robin had won, Hugh would have... Wouldn't have been able to confess his love to Junie. Okay. That would have kept the trio's relationship the same. Never knew Junie could be so deep. Wait, what? I thought they were both interested. So how does that keep everything the same? I feel like I'm missing something. Sorry, I guess my personal problems probably won't be of any help in court, huh? Well, you never know. Help often comes from the most unexpected places. Thanks, Juniper. Alright, tell us about the owl. Owl? I was, I was wondering about that owl you had on you when you were arrested. Detective Fulbright, we found this in the suspect's pocket. So I'm assuming that was for the mock trial. Mm, there's there's blood on this. This evidence we made for the mock trial. A mock trial? Never heard of such a thing, but it sounds fishy to me. <laughs> oh, Detective Fulbright. Here's the murder weapon from the mock trial. Professor Court and I were pre prepping it in the art room until the day before the trial. I didn't even realize I still had it on me until I was arrested. Then we've nothing to worry about. There shouldn't be any way to link it to the crime. Oh, there's gonna be. We're gonna find out that's actual blood. There's no way around that. And still, that blood red color on the owl bothers me. Cause it's blood. Okay. So it was made to look like blood. Then blood got on it, and then it was made to look like blood again. But obviously, they couldn't cover it all up. Wasn't it just paint or something? I mean, I was looking at it from pretty far away, but it probably was just paint. But that's what bothers me. It wasn't on the owl when we were prepping it yesterday. It wasn't? Then how and when did it get there? Well, before the mock trial began, I showed Thena and Mr. Wright to the waiting room. Then I went back to my dressing room to get the trial props we were going to use. That's when I found the art room key and the owl with what looked like blood on it. A key and the owl? Professor Court normally has the art room key since she's the fine arts club's advisor. And since the key was there in the dressing room, I thought she was the one who had painted the owl to look like it had blood on it. After all, she was always always insisted that the props should be realistic, so... The owl suddenly shows up on the day of the trial with what looks like blood on it. I have a really bad feeling about this. Me too, but let's not jump the gun on this. No, we need to, we need to be prepared for that. Oh, uh, mock trial prep work. You, Professor Court, and Professor Court were busy preparing for the mock trial together yesterday, right? Was that the last time you saw her? Uh, yes, I left the school at around 6 p.m. Okay. Did you notice anything different about her? 
no, I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. She looked and acted the same as always. I would have never guessed she'd end up like this. Looks like we're about out of time. Thank you for coming to see me. I, well, I wanted to show you evidence. We'll do everything we can to prove you innocent tomorrow. I know, and I believe in you, Athena. Well, I should go now. Bye. Is she going to be alright? She's like a shadow of the girl we met back at the academy. The Junie I knew was always like that, a little weak and sickly, but the fact that she's lifted her facade shows that she trusts us. Even still, what is it? Well, when Junie and her two friends were talking about their friendship, I sensed some discord in their hearts. Seriously? Yeah, but it was really faint. It might have been mis- I might have been mistaken. Nah, we're gonna have to get to the bottom of this. There's no reason to doubt their friendship, is there? Don't worry, everything will be fine. You and Juniper are friends, right? You know that friend I mentioned to you earlier? Forget this. Whenever something's troubling one of us, the other can just feel it. That's real friendship. I suppose you're right. Might as well forget about that and concentrate on the trial. Yep, tomorrow's the big day. Let's sort out what we know so far. Okay. The victim, Professor Constance Court, was murdered in the art room on the third floor. Then, her body was moved to the outdoor stage in the quad. Also, the location where we found the body was just as the mock trial script described. I wish those were the only similarities they shared. What do you mean? What I mean is the script and the case are exactly the same in almost every respect. So it follows that the actual trial may very well unfold just like the mock trial did. Oh no! The mock trial ended right before the prosecution was about to win. Well, that's not going to happen. This time, Junie will be declared not guilty. Of course, I intend to get our result the honest way. We can do this. We'll be fine. After all, I have Apollo, and he's the king of being fine. <laughs> yes, let's go with that. Oh, that's it. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't really paying attention. I was just enjoying enjoying the baseline. Here we are. 9:47 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby number 3. Oh, my butterflies have butterflies in their stomach. So what's it like to have your very own case for the first time? My heart hasn't raced this fast since I ran that full marathon last year. If it keeps up, you might get a lawyer's high. You know, like a runner's high. And relax, everyone's nervous their first time. So my fears weren't unfounded. After all, the, today's prosecutor is so terribly brutal and willing to use any means necessary to win a conviction. There's that the end justifies the means concept again. Now that it has come to this... We have no choice but to fight fire with fire. The end justifies the means. I wish you'd stop saying that, right? That's your method, Professor. I'm going to defend Juniper in my own way. But Miss Sykes, yesterday you... Just yesterday you told me. The lawyer, what is it you treasure beyond all else? It's an easy one, Professor. Seeking justice for my clients. Yeah, it is interesting to see, like, these ideals played against each other, because, like, it, it's not just an unambiguous good ideal versus a bad ideal. It's, like, having the, having the same goal, but having uh, different methods for, for reaching it. But if the trial proceeds in the same manner and ends in the same way as the mock trial, would you not lose everything you've worked so hard to gain? Well, I'll just have to make sure that doesn't happen. Then won't I? My, but aren't you a stubborn one? Well, I suppose you'll have to learn of your own inefficiency the hard way. <sighs> forgive me, Professor Means, but can we just leave it at that? Oh dear, please forgive me. It's just, I, I wish to protect Juniper by any means I can. Uh, I do too, but... Now if you'd excuse me... Uh, thanks to him, I'm feeling even more pressure than before. Don't let it get to you, Athena. And don't forget to keep smiling. I'll be fine. And I haven't forgotten what Mr. Wright said. The worst of times are when lawyers have to force their biggest smiles. The trial's about to begin. I'll show you to the courtroom if you please. 
I got this. Apollo, I'm counting on you to support Athena this time. Okay, Mr. Wright, leave it to me. That's right, I have Apollo to back me up. Junie's fate rests in my hands. I won't rest until she walks free. I mean, we know how this ends, right? Because this is in the past, but like... I'm, what I'm most curious about is the impact this has on events after the f first trial. Because something tells me this is going to be related. Ooh, uh-oh. Uh, I'm hoping that's not an issue on the recording. I'm going to guess that it was. Weird. Uh, don't know why that happened. What is now in session for the trial of Juniper Woods? Uh, Athena Sykes, defense team leader, is ready, Your Honor. That doesn't sound very confident. You sure you're okay? I'll, I'll be fine. Your baldness. I know, I know. As usual, you want me to deliver the opening statement. Ugh. In this case is crystal clear. I see no need to explicate it any further. Now, some of the witness. Is there something the matter? Please do share your baldness. Whatever gave you that idea. Bet Bailiff, please call our first witness. And now we don't even get an opening statement. Jeez. Detective Fulbright. He and Prosecutor Blackwell have become quite the team. Oh, right. The case brief. Leave it to me. Yes, let the detective in charge. Everyone's favorite friend of justice explain. What was that just now? It's like he and Blackwell are totally in sync. Well, I don't think they're capable of mind melding, if that's what you're thinking. Mm, all right, Detective Fulbright, uh, would you please explain the case to the court? Professor Court's body was discovered on October 24th at approximately 2.30 p.m. She was murdered with this all I have here. The victim's blood and the defendant's prints were both discovered on it. Yep. All right, not great, but far from conclusive. Eek! Wow. Court's autopsy report added to the court record. While that bird can deliver evidence too, Blackwell has him, trained him well. Maybe Blackwell should train it not to mess up people's hair while he's at it. Moving right along, the body was discovered on the outdoor stage, although no blood was found there. However, we detected traces of a massive amount of blood in the third floor art room. In short, the murder took place in the art room. What if it didn't? What if it was just made to look like it took place in the art room? I don't think we can take that as gospel. So then the body had been moved from the art room to the stage? Precisely, and there's one more piece of irrefutable evidence. A recording made by a tape recorder that a school paper reporter hid in the art room. It captured a female voice screaming, You're a goner! Uh-oh. What's this? You have such a recording? God, I really hope that's not coming through in the recording. It is so, like, distorted. Must be from that tape recorder, Miriam. But well, why is this the first we've heard of a death threat at the moment of the murder? That is interesting. Dude, please! Would like to play the tape for you now. You're a goner. Mm. It is quite hard to hear. But the voice does sound female. Okay, a woman can be heard shouting you're a goner. That... With this mock trial, like, that's just so not conclusive. The noise and low volume of the voice have made voice print analysis all but impossible. Then you haven't identified the voice as belonging to the defendant. Not so fast. After all, voice print analysis senses at everything. The victim was killed at night, then discovered in the afternoon the next day. The question is, when was the body moved? Oh, oh, I know. It could have been moved in the middle of the night when no one was around. 
Sorry, but no. No, because we would have seen it on the stage. The campus was full of students that morning. However, no one reported seeing a body. That means the body was moved sometime before the mock trial when all the students and faculty were gathered in the lecture hall and the rest of the campus was empty. It was during this time, Hugh O'Connor, one of the mock trial participants, found the body. So the prosecution heard about Hugh seeing the body. We have a more moment. If all of the students and faculty were gathered in the lecture hall, then there wouldn't have been anyone who could have moved the body. Ha ha ha. Have no fear, for there is always an exception. Exception. The three mock trial participants were standing by in individual dressing rooms. They were the only ones who had free access to the deserted campus before the mock trial. What? Uh, then that would mean? What would that mean? Those three students were the only ones who could have moved the body. In justice we trust. I don't like where this is headed, Athena. Me neither. And by those three, I mean... Hugh O'Connor, Robin Newman, and Juniper Woods. I knew it. Did you like to fall bright? Don't say what I think you're about to say. In justice we trust. I take it everyone understands now. The voice believed to be that of the murderer was female. And out of three people who could have moved the body, just one is a girl. That leaves the defendant, Juniper Woods, as the only possibility. Now... Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll look into that between episodes. One, to see if it's happening. Uh, and then two, to see if I can fix it. Impressive. He has you on the ropes even before any cross-examinations. You could at least pretend to be upset for me. Mm, a splendid job, full bright. That could not be any clearer. Feel free to anticipate a salary raise next month. Why does he, he get to decide full bright salary? Ha ha ha! I don't do this for the money. It's all about justice. In justice we trust. Hmm. Not only a half foot, but a perennial stuck in the mud you are. Stick in the mud. Guess neither the carrot nor the stick works on Detective Fulbright. You know, I kind of respect that. So, Philip, uh, please bring our next witness to the stand. Hmm. So, our first witness is, is a cardboard box. I mean, we just had an orca. Yeah. It's stealth mode activated. Deactivated. What? Well, I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> oh my! The box is hands! <laughs> oh, judge. A smile, your honor. What in the dickens? I've just had my picture taken! She's stolen my soul! I'm Scuttlebutt, senior at the Legal Academy. I'm a reporter on the judge course. Juniper's been a bad, bad girl. I'll tell you all about her crime. Um, might I ask whether you could come out of that box? How oh, will I get any more scoops if I blow my cover? So the answer is no. After all, covert action is an undercover reporter's bread and butter. Mm, but testimony from a faceless witness is highly irregular. Uh, much like the orca, you know what, actually it's fine, whatever. And the former ninja I met in the clink said that exposing those who work in the shadows is to pass the death sentence upon them. Oh my, I never thought of it that way. Very well, if it would spare a life, I'll make a special exception this time. Former ninja in prison? Holy Shinto! <laughs> How can the judge believe this loaded of crock? <laughs> oh, I love everything about that exchange. Now your testimony, please. Uh, oh, but uh, take care not to reveal your face. Similarity of the case in the script, okay. The murder happened exactly like Juniper's mock trial script. Up until the mock trial began, only Professor Court and Juniper knew the script's contents. But Professor Court's sudden decision not to use the script sparked Juniper's murderous wait, what? That's interesting. Juniper has to be the killer. She has a motive in the murders just like her script. Okay. The murder is just 
just like our script. Could such a thing be true? Compare our script with the murder case and the crime scene photos. Then you'll see. Uh-oh. Mm, this is so simple. Even an ape posing it as a decrepit old judge could understand. Rude. Only the victim and the defendant were privy to the script. Ergo, the defendant is the killer. Furthermore, in the art room where the crime supposedly occurred, this witness's script, along with an envelope on which it would use, was written... were found. Uh, okay. This proves that the accused script had been rejected the day before the mock trial. She pressed the victim to use her script, an argument ensued, and then the fatal stabbing. Wait, no. That makes perfect sense. What now? Prosecutor Blackwell has all his ducks lined up in a row. He's really on a roll now. Ah, he's like a pit bull once it sinks his teeth into you. How dare she? My script had it all. A bum rap and phony evidence, grudges and betrayals. So, kind of like this trial, right? Mm. Mm. Uh, does the defense is ready to cross examine the witness? No, no problem. I mean, yes, I'm ready. I think... Time to find a hole in her testimony and unbox the truth. I've seen it done over and over. I know I can do this. All right, we got this. There must be places where the script in this case diverge. Yeah. Don't sweat the details. That's what that kind of stress will give you wrinkles. I'm not worried. My skin is as fair as silk. <laughs> Indeed, you are quite fair. Fairly desperate. <laughs> well, what did you just say? <laughs> Black girl really turned that one around on you. <laughs> Whose side are you on, Apollo? <laughs> exactly. Whose side are you on? Hurry up and think of a clever comeback. Whoa, easy there, Athena. Now you listen to me. The two cases do indeed have their differences. For one, the stage hadn't yet been erected in the mock trial script. In the actual case, there were signs indicating the victim's wrists had been bound. Yeah, that's like kind of important. But such differences pale in comparison to the host of similarities. I don't know, that's, that's true. In any event, replicating the crime without knowledge of their scripts is an impossibility. Mm, that might be true. Hmm. Looks like I won't be passing this off as a coincidence. What a total burn. Try again, why don't you, pawn of woods? Somebody could have stolen a peep beforehand. I don't think so. I mean, I tried any number of times. Shame on you, Miriam. Yeah, but that crafty she-devil, Juniper, has eyes in the back of her head. What chance does your average person have if an undercover reporter like me failed? Interesting point, still. Miss Scuttlebutt, won't you get in trouble later for admitting to such underhanded tactics? Why, you? I plead entrapment. Why is you're blurting out your own crime entrapment? You haven't scooped on me yet. They were all set to use Juniper scripts. No. How do you know that Professor Court wasn't going to use her scripts? There in the yard room where the heinous crime took place, an envelope marked to use and Miriam's scuttlebutt script were found. Well, now I'm just suspicious of Miriam. And evidently, the script that was going to be used belonged to the girl in the box over there. It's only natural that my script would be accepted and hers rejected. I introduced all sorts of brand new concepts, including bribery and fake evidence. Fake evidence? Yeah. It was a cutting edge script portraying a courtroom battle in the dark age of the law. Can't help but feel Professor Court went out of her way not to use it. Yeah. Juniper, she used some devious underhanded techniques to get her script chosen. That's why her script and not my masterpiece was used in the mock trial. How's that for an explanation? That doesn't make any sense. That part is true. 
Anyone who saw the mock trial could have reenacted, recreated the crime. After they saw the mock trial, they could have easily staged the body, just like the script. Ugh, Athena. <laughs> Weary is a tri trial which pits Hawk against Canary. Well, what did you just say? <laughs> if he's so weary, he should try hoofing us. I bet that saves some enemy. This is not the time for jokes, Apollo. He just called me a canary. Don't let him get to you. At least canaries pick up things quickly, just like you. Mm, I shan't repeat myself, so listen carefully, Sex Dono. Hugh O'Connor discovered the body before the mock trial even began. How could one state the body as it is in the script before anyone knew its contents? Do we know that it was found like that, though? Yeah, that's right. Do you even fathom the intricacies that go into staging a crime scene? No, I think not. You have the rudimentary mind of an elementary school child. Elementary school! Oh. Porter's testimony throws attorney Athena Sykes for a loop. The perfect caption. The marvelous, a photo in the newspaper is just the thing to boost your brand. In a school paper? Seriously? I believe you pressed the witness more than enough, Miss Sykes. Wait, I wasn't done. Uh oh. Hmm. Now do you see how clear cut my case is? Taken now and in that fair, desperate mind of yours. Etch it deep so that you may never forget. N no! No! Even my arguments get thrown back in my face. It wasn't supposed to be like this. What am I going to do? Athena, you should just about have all the answers you've been looking for now. Huh? Think about it this way. If the killer knew the details of the mock trial, would they really commit the crime in the exact same way? I don't follow. Try to place yourself in the killer's shoes. I bet you'll discover an inconsistency if you do. Ah, I get it. Thanks, Apollo. Miss Scuttlebutt, just so we're clear, you're claiming that the killer intentionally made the crime scene look just as it was in the script, and that it is beyond a shadow of a doubt not a coincidence. Is that correct? No, duh. For all, it's just more evidence of Juniper's evil she-devil ways. <laughs> what did I say? What did I say? Our client made the crime scene look just like the script, something known only to her. That would be not just foolhardy, but completely irrational. What, what, what do you mean? Mm, yes, Miss Sykes, please tell the what you mean by irrational. And we'll have Athena explain what's irrational in the next episode. I'll, uh, I'll try to get the audio cleaned up, uh, see if that's coming through and, and all that before the next episode. I hope you're still enjoying this either way. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.